July board voting meeting. Um, this is one of the rare times in the year where we don't have a board workshop the week prior uh, to cover the agenda items. So this voting meeting will be a little different than the ones we've had more previous, um, previously, where um, or more recently, where we've used the consent agenda. Uh, so board members, just uh, be mindful you can still condense your, your motions, but we'll still want to make sure we have ample opportunity to talk about any any uh, items on the agenda. Obviously, you want to go quickly as you can, Mr. No. Del no. no, you're okay. Sorry. You, want to stretch it out. you want to stretch out the meeting yeah. motion. Yeah. I'm trying to hold you here so you can't get the vacation that you want. So, aren't you leaving tomorrow? Okay, we'll leave here tomorrow. Um, so, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to start off. Um, with the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, just before we get started this evening, I just wanted to mention that we did have an executive session prior to the board meeting for us to discuss legal matters. And the next item on the agenda is a recognition, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Phillips. Camera guy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are here tonight to honor a community member who has stepped up in the time of need on more than one occasion. Uh, specifically for the district, though, um, you might recall a couple years ago there was some concern of Maydees going away. Um, and then this gentleman was the, the bulwark in getting a committee together and really uh, cap captaining, if you will, Maydees um, to, to what it is today. Uh, if you, anybody is at the event this summer, it was a fantastic event and it was to his credit uh, what had happened. Um, he was again in charge of the, the whole shoot and match. Um, that's not only where it ends. Um, he's been involved in uh, other events in the community. I know he's been really big in, in helping the, uh, the district come through with uh, uh, the Heroes event. Um, we had a, a homecoming uh, due to some weather events that, that was unforeseen, uh, which, was, uh, which included some uh, fireworks for homecoming. And that was a special treat for the team and all the students. And then uh, every time we scored a touchdown, unfortunately for some of the community, we scored a lot of touchdowns that night. <laughs> Uh, good for the team, but uh, it was a loud night, but then afterwards the, the, the uh, spectators retreated to an event. Um, I can go on and on. I mean, he's involved in a lot of things, uh, but I just wanted to uh, express the district's uh, appreciation for all he's done. I want to uh, ask that some of the representatives from East ECEF would come forward as well to help recognize him uh, with a brick in your honor that will be placed out in front of the high school where all the other bricks are laid near the Big Eagle. So if you would come forward, please, to accept on behalf of the district, as well as the CF and the uh, alumni Thank you, sir. Appreciate Absolutely. It. to happen of course thank dr phillips it's been great to work with um the board and the school in collaboration the, the folks on dr phillips team um tom mcgath rob have been wonderful to work with so we did, did have a really nice event i know a lot of people probably want to throw this at me i want to throw this at, i want to throw this at jerry but it'll be nice since it's such a nice break so um so i uh, thank the board thank the fun. we definitely um want to collaborate more with on the township level with my role there so some exciting things coming with um some stuff working with Mike and Hunter and the rest of you guys. So we're excited with Trexeter and just want to again thank everybody for um, this opportunity and thank especially Amy and her team. It's been phenomenal to work with them. I know I love working with, with Amy. So I think as long as Amy's involved in ECF, I'll, I'll do almost anything. So, and I just want to thank my five uh, school volunteers, actually four. I think somebody's from New York or something. Somebody's friend from New York. But anyway, those four girls did a tremendous, tremendous job. They worked, you know, the entire two days. Did, did really great work. Didn't complain about anything. Yeah, actually, you want to bring them up and, and say your name? 
<laughs> Most are going to 10th grade, but yeah, if you want to say your name, because they were instrumental oh, in making May Days a success. The four of them did more than more than 20 kids can do. They were just top notch. Just, just say your name. So what grade you're going to? Um, Alice is the one going into 10th grade. Katie McGinney going into 10th. Joanna Neffer going into 10th. Lauren Bowers going into 10th. So again, thank you everyone. I got to have to talk again. Now. And John, on, on behalf of the board too, I, I think we all kind of sh share uh, the same feelings as expressed by Dr. Phillips, and uh, just enjoy the fact that we, we feel like we have a uh, a new opportunity to work, I think, more effectively you know, with the township and also your your, your civic in involvement. I think in May days is really commendable, and uh, and your, your organization and, and, and the hours and hours you put into that, I think, it really speaks a lot. So yeah, and I saw you in line. great. Yes. Yeah, All right. See you. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Amy. And thanks to you guys too for coming out. Have a nice evening. Okay, we'll move on in our agenda, and uh, our next um, item is a presentation uh, by Alicia Lenart, who is our our uh, SAP program coordinator at the high school, and uh, she's going to give us the 19. 2018-19 uh, update. We always appreciate Alicia coming out you know, for these um, summary summaries of how the year went. I'm sure we have a lot of questions as well. So yeah. Thanks for being here. So I gave you, uh, you guys all have it, right? That's the PowerPoint. There are two. <coughs> no. I just have one. Did you just have two? Okay. I just, no, I just have one. Okay. <laughs> um, Everything in there is self-explanatory. I mean, you guys have seen this before, but I wanted to do some highlights. I looked at 2015 to last year and including this year, just to kind of give you guys a perspective on where we were at and where we've been. So in 2015-2016 school year, we had no satellite-based mental health services at Exeter. So that means progressions was not in any of our buildings in 2015-2016. Um, we had no elementary SAP services at that point in time in 2015-2016. Um, and we had just started doing re-entry meetings and re-entry meetings are having really big meetings when a student is coming back from any type of placement into the building. And we just started doing really good comprehensive, well, started doing suicide or crisis meetings. So that year was like a big year. And, and yet, it was a big year and we still didn't have services at the elementary building um, and we still were missing a lot of components. Fast forward to 2016-2017 school year and we started re-entry meetings at the junior high as well as at the high school. So, and they were getting successful. We still did not um, have elementary student assistance in that school year. We started progressions that year, so we started our satellite-based mental health provider, and we started seeing every student at the high school on the first day of school and giving them information on um, crisis information and student assistance information. Okay. Move into the 2017-2018 school year, the re-entry meetings are at the high school and the junior high and they're starting to have some down at Riften. We have elementary services, now not a lot, but we have elementary services in there. Uh, we're adding a prevention program to Lorraine and Owatton Creek that year. We're um, getting kind of control of the satellite-based satellite mental health provider. And what I mean by that is, kind of seeing where we can get kids in if the provider that's at the school is really the one that we want to use or do we want to use someone outside of the school and that we got a handle on. I think we started to get more of a handle on that um, in the 17-18 school year. Um, and our homeless work went up and out of the high school 
we had about 40 to 50 out of 232 referrals that came directly from parents. So parents were directly calling us and asking for student assistance services. So in that year, the 2017-2018 year, I thought, boy, we really like are doing great work. Like I thought, this isn't, how are we gonna get better? Really, because we were, I thought we really hit a good spot last year. So we get into this school year and uh, we had an addition of a really great uh, school counselor at Riften, Kate. Um, and I can't think of Kate's last name now, Atkinson's. And she noticed that we were all doing our crisis screenings differently at every building. And was like, we really should have something more uniformed. So we took a look at Act 71, which is the Suicide Prevention Act worked with it, developed a screening, contacted both hospitals, decided to work more in conjunction with the high school, trained everyone in the district that needed to be trained. And we had, by the end of the school year, at the junior high and at the high school, we had kids that were identifying suicidal ideations on their own and coming down to us and asking for help before they had even done anything. And we had a really good, good system and process and protocol in place. Now, doesn't mean that it can't, we can't fine tune it for next year, but this year we really worked hard at it. Um, and I think we really did some great things with the Act 71. With our re-entry meetings, the goal is for next year to be making sure that we're doing re-entry meetings at every level. So trying to get, somebody at every elementary re-entry meeting, at every Riften re-entry meeting, at every junior high re-entry meeting, so that we have a really comprehensive um, plan when a student is coming back so that they're successful in coming back from treatment. But it's, it's doing well. Um, homeless services, homeless students went up this year, <coughs> way more than ever, and thankfully to Kathy Cordoli, who really helped a lot with those this year, we really, um, worked with a lot of different agencies this year, not just the PCIU, but we worked with Mary Shelter, we worked with uh, Family Promise, we were better at getting families into homeless shelters and services and then getting them connected into other houses. And we were good at that at every level. Um, what else? Vaping, we did a ton of vaping presentations this year for faculty, for staff, for even administration just recently, and really updating everyone on vaping and drug and alcohol current trends and mental health current trends. And then we also, at the end of this year, worked with all of the uh, health department, and we now will have, going into next year, a K through 12th grade health curriculum that addresses drug and alcohol and mental health at every grade level moving forward. So we, I think we did a tremendous amount of work this year besides from the numbers that are on there. Like I think we really made headway um, in the services that we're providing here at Exeter. So those were just some highlights of where we're at. And we added an extra, the, what has changed is this year we added an extra day to myself so that I could be more available to help out with elementary or junior high or right in wherever I would need to fill in <coughs> so that I could move around more. Um, and we're looking to add some more time at right in for next school year. Do you guys have any questions for me? I, I, I had some questions about vaping. Yeah. You know, I just I just kind of wondered um, what are you seeing in terms of when kids are, are starting to become introduced to vaping? <coughs> what grade level do you, do you see kids starting now? Well, I think they're being introduced as early as elementary because more and more parents are vaping. So more more kids are seeing it at home. So they're being introduced to it at home. And we know from statistics with poison control that poison control calls have gone up from younger kids ingesting the e-juices and the e-liquids that are laying around the house. So 
we know they're being introduced at that level and we know that our health curriculum has to address vaping to a certain degree even in our elementary building but then what we're seeing is statistically is that it's more seventh and eighth grade that you're starting you do have some fifth and sixth graders <coughs> that are especially if they have older siblings or it's readily available but really seventh and eighth grade do we, do we do anything that allows students to anonymously, anonymously report annually their um, behaviors or habits relative to substances? We did the PAYS survey. Mm -hmm. And do we, get, do we get those results back yet? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we have that data. Okay, and what are we seeing in terms of anything in the profile now that reflects any changes or shifts in patterns of behavior or, or substances? The, the, Vaping has gone up tremendously, and so is marijuana. A smoking use. gone down. Smoking, sort of a yes, <laughs> smoking has gone down yeah. tremendously. Okay. It's at the lowest it's ever been. Cigarette yeah. smoking, but vaping um, and marijuana use is high, and that's across the United States. Are our, are our policies regarding vaping sufficient to, for you to address it from a disciplinary perspective if it's determined to be? We actually just talked about that um, at the, board, at the um, administrative retreat. We talked about adding into the vaping, the vaping discipline that there would, you would have to have an educational session on it. So you would not only get you know, a day of in school or whatever the discipline is in it, but you would have to have a vaping um, informational session on it. And that a nicotine sensation type group would be offered to you. But the educational session would definitely be in place. Could, could you touch on how important the educational piece is because the lack of knowledge of what's actually inside? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, so the most students, and this is, also true with marijuana. <coughs> most students and most parents do not realize what's in vaping. The e-juices, they, they don't recognize that there's chemicals in there. A lot of them think that there, there are some e-liquids that do not have nicotine in them. They're very rare, but there are some. And most kids will tell you that they are using juices that don't have nicotine in them, that they just have <coughs> flavoring in them. And then when you look at the small print that's on the bottle, it's like, this has nicotine in it. Um, but that's not only what is bad about the juices, not only is the nicotine in there, but the chemicals that are in the juices and the flavoring, just in the flavoring, <coughs> causes harm to your lungs. And so a lot of them don't even have any idea what they're, what they're putting into their lungs and the damage that they're doing. So the educational session is key um, and then we talked about at the retreat putting in educational sessions for parents as well. So doing um, a monthly informational email that talks about vaping with like an infogram on it or what they look like, um, what are the damages, how you can start talking to your kids about these things so that you can bring them up. Yeah, so we're gonna try to really fit um, some parent sessions next year, and we're going to add into the discipline policy an educational session to go with it. And is the legislature starting to make any inroads in terms of regulating you know, um, vaping products, they, cigarettes, and that sort of thing? They put a ban on them, so there's no a PA indoor ban, so you can't vape inside anymore. Um, and they also, it's 18 to purchase, although they're not as heavily watching it as they were with cigarettes. <coughs> so they're, they're trying to do more on that. They also put out, um, uh, FDA just said that you cannot market to youth anymore. So a lot of the e-juices, some of the e-juices look like uh, the Rocket Pops. You know the Rocket Pops that you can get from, like, uh, from the ice cream man that comes around. Some of the e-juices actually were <coughs> designed and looks like look like a rocket pop so that a kid five-year-old would think oh this is a juice just like that or it looked like an apple juice box um, and they just did away passed a law basically saying that you can't market it that way anymore so they're changing some of the marketing but unfortunately a lot of it's already out there <coughs> offer the educational sessions 
Um, our SAP student assistance liaisons, yep. Mm -hmm. So SAP team will, yes. Okay. And then they're also going to incorporate it in the health curriculum. So all of our health teachers are receiving information from us that has like lesson plans and different things that they can teach at different age levels. But we'll be available to come in as well too. This is kind of off, off the wall, kind of a wacky idea, but have we ever considered bringing doctors or surgeons in to talk to the students about what it, what, what it actually does to your lungs or presenting pictures about different things like that? I, I just came up with this now thinking about a similar instance with speeding where there was a volunteer firefighter who came in and showed the students pictures of accidents mm -hmm. from overturned cars and teams and you know something not inappropriately graphic but graphic in the way that like oh my gosh in the new in the new stuff that the high school and the junior high is using on vaping it has what it actually does to your lungs it has pictures okay. it shows the irreversible scarring that's on there um, so that, that it does, and then with the marijuana, um, Karen is now doing brain scans and doing a lot of neuro stuff, and so we have actual photos of, you know, a teenager at 18 that has not used any substances, and then a teenager at 18 that has used marijuana three times a week for two years and nothing else, and actual scans of brains so that the kids can see, like, this is actually the damage that it's doing to a brain that's on there. So we have to doing that. that. I have a couple of buddies who might be interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we are going to be using stuff like that. But I ha we don't have any doctors coming in, but we're going to be starting to use more things like that. I think there's just something, um, maybe potent's the right word, something really potent with the people who actually have to deal with the aftermath and the consequences mm -hmm. of those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the same way where you have a volunteer firefighter who's been to the crash sites of an overturned car because somebody was speeding or texting and driving. Mm -hmm. So just food for thought. Thank you. Just had a question about the mental health. Um, can I assume that we'll, we continue to still have mainly anxiety disorders that you see? Is that the pre most prevalent? Yes, uh, most prevalent <coughs> anxiety followed by depression. Mm -hmm. um, more so social anxiety than anything else. Yeah. I, I would say that we are doing a very good job at identifying early and then we have a lot more options here for a student. And I think we're doing a really good job at making teachers aware and we have a great, we have great teachers at every level but at the junior high and the high school, getting them involved earlier on with the consent of the student has been happening more and more, and we've been able to come up with some really good plans to help kids get through different and situations. Some kids receive their therapy right in school? Some kids school receive then? their therapy right in the school. We have progressions at the high school now. Well, progressions is at every level, but we also mm -hmm. have Berkshire Psychiatric this year. So Berkshire Psychiatric um, saw six kids only. They saw kids that had private insurance. So for those kids that the parents still couldn't get them anywhere else, um, but didn't have medical assistance, which is what progression takes, Berkshire Psychiatric saw six of those students. And, and it sounds like, just you're talking about the homeless, it sounds like you're, you're taking on some kind of social work roles as well, you know, kind of getting more, you know, directly involved in with families and home situations and working with agencies and that sort of thing outside the district. I think my position, I think, always since I've been here has been more of that. When you look at, um, because I do the SAP maintenances for the county, so I'll go out and I'll maintenance a SAP team over the summer and, uh, or during the school year, I'll help out at Karen. And, if you look at our, my position here, it's really not comparable to what other schools have. And most schools have just a student assistance liaison. Not that that's bad, but that's, I, we tend to do a little bit more here because of being here five days a week and for the length of time that I've been here, we get, um, I'm able to get involved in a lot of stuff that 
maybe wouldn't necessarily be what I would do if I was just at a school twice a week. Yeah, so I mean, Mifflin, us, Conroe Weiser really has some long-term people that have been there a long time and really doing some great work. Well, we're really, I think we're just really fortunate to have you here, you know, with your experience and your, um, we hear so many great comments about the SAP team and your, your service at the at secondary level, so we really um, appreciate all you do and, and we know the benefits are there. Mm -hmm. The only um, recommendation, and I on those what you guys have, and I had given this to, um, to Dr. Phillips and Dr. Miller as well, is that I think that as we move forward, that the increase should be on the elementary and on Riften side. If we are going to increase services or if we are going to add more, I think we need to start adding more at those levels, which we are with Riften this year coming up. But that's where I think if we can get more and more services in there, then we're going to catch kids as early as we possibly can. So that would just be a recommendation and a goal that I put in just for us. I just have one more question. Um, I think I had asked this last year, but are you s seeing kids using ADHD medication for test prep or anything like using Adderall ahead of a long study? There was or a spike. Okay. There was a spike um, for a while, but we haven't seen it this year. It was not up. It was down this year. Okay. Um, but there had been a spike for a couple of years where there were a lot more kids that were using it in that way and at college as well. Okay. Um, but it has dropped. Um, illicit drugs overall, with the exception of marijuana, are all down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to item five in our agenda. I'm going to say one thing. I don't to see a oh, public comment site before. <coughs> Very bottom of the page. Um, opportunity now uh, for members of the audience, anyone in the public uh, who would like to make some comments to the board. Uh, you're going to for three minutes to state your name and your address. Seeing none, we'll move on to item five um, minutes. Um, and uh, we have two sets of um, minutes for approval this evening uh, the board workshop minutes from June 11th and the board voting meeting for the, for the board voting minutes from June uh, 25th. So it's recommended the board of directors approve these two sets of minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, treasurer's report. Is there someone who wants to present the treasurer's report? Well, typically, uh, if there's questions, we'll answer them. But um, in the past, we've not gone through in detail. Going forward, if that's your desire, uh, it's been prepared and <coughs> provided. So. Uh, what I can add, say, you know, Alana and I, uh, we are starting our closing entry. This report uh, uh, does not reflect uh, all of our closing entries. Uh, at year end, we make a lot of referrals of revenue and expense, uh, and we'll be doing that through uh, August. Uh, so uh, these are preliminary numbers for year end. Uh, there's nothing uh, to highlight. Um, so we have two items on the treasurer's report. One is the actual report itself. Item B or the payment requests uh, for uh, June 26th through um, July 16th. So it's recommended the board of directors approve those two items under the treasurer's report. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Board policy. Um, we have several items that we've discussed previously um, that uh, I believe finish up our um, financial section of the of policies, um, the local taxpayer bill of rights, uh, the Gatsby statement, the tax <coughs> benefits, procurement cards, federal fiscal compliance, 
travel reimbursement type of programs. These are all second reading. They're A through F. Does anyone have any, um, well, let me first uh, say before I uh, make any comments, further comments, let me just say that the board, uh, it's recommended to the board that we approve policies A through F. Any, any, any discussion on any of these policies that I mentioned? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay, uh, now we're going to be moving into, uh, thank God, we're moving into the 700 section of our policy manual, making headway, and we'll see the end of the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so, uh, policy 701 has to do with facilities planning. Um, policy 702 has to do with gifts, grants, and donations. 703, sanitary management. 704, maintenance. maintenance. 705, safety. And 706, Property records. Um, it's recommended the board of directors uh, approve these policies for first reading. Second, great discussion. I would like to say I had, a, I had a question about facilities planning because one of the things in there, and I got some feedback from um, Sean Lockinger on this, he reviews our policies. There's a statement about the fact that the school district will do an annual census and hire a census enumerator, <coughs> and that's part of the school code. You know, as we talked about it a little bit, you told me that you know, this is a part of the school code that um, still exists, so therefore it's integrated in our policy, but that we do not obviously hire census enumerators. I don't believe we actually do a paper census. We don't contact families on an annual basis, but we probably do manage or maintain some form of documentation of families that we, we know of, is that correct? Yes, and uh, through the families that we have, uh, asking them to provide us information on uh, children younger than kindergarten. Okay, so we do have some information, but it may not be complete. Yeah. I think it would be somewhat onerous if all districts were required to actually hire census enumerators to do an annual census and go door to door every single day, or every single year, and, and try to figure out who the lives in each household and if they have any, any children. Uh, you know, the, the census is required according to school code for, kid, for children birth through 18. So that's just an aspect of that that I was uh, you know, curious about. Any other, any other thoughts about any of the policies that you may have um, reviewed? This should be on display for the next month for first reading. And 704? I wanted to make sure we're now looking at the maintenance a little bit more, and <coughs> I know that we've done some site visits along the way to know a few things, and I didn't know what the current practice was. Obviously, um, we're now asking the principals to take that on, or how we'll be handling that in, in conjunction with other duties and responsibilities. Well, they are not, when you say taking that on, they oh, report so to Mr. Perzui to make sure they have a list of what needs to be done in the building. <coughs> he is going around the building on annual visits and then uh, him and myself will also go around toward the end of the summer and do checks on each building to make sure things have been done. So, I mean, to me, maintenance is not an annual thing. I would look at maintenance as an ongoing thing. True. Um, I mean, every time we take a site visit, you know, not for Mr. Brazil's fault, but he always finds something. True. You know, and sometimes some things leak out, you know, some things have a little harder. The other thing that I, I noticed that policy 705 uh, talks about um, the requirement to have workplace safety teams um, and, and meetings. Um, and I was curious as to whether we actually conduct that activity as specified in the policy and administration assured me that we do. That's great. Great to know. The windows are open. Okay, any other, any other uh, questions or concerns about policies for first reading? So this would be voting on policies G 
through L. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Business functions, Mr. Gill. Thanks, Dr. Hamburger. Uh, it's recommended that the Board of School Directors approve an agreement with All in Hand Schools, Inc., subject to solicitor review to provide a software-based solution known as Ed Insight. It can be used to manage and share educational and administrative data. The term of the agreement in 2019-20 through 21-22 at a cost of 26300 year one, 18800 year two, the same year three. This replaces performance plus previous software Second. Any discussion? Mr. Brady. Regarding our current software, is this because our existing license is requiring the software no longer exists? The software that we currently use is uh, more aligned with PowerSchool. We don't use PowerSchool, we use Skyward. Um, we vetted at least three, maybe four. Yeah, it was closer to six or seven. Closer to six different programs. This was the one that the team felt was the most uh, useful for the district. Uh, it's, it's actually a savings over the Power Performance Plus, I believe. Uh, it's, it's pretty comparable. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of the data warehouse tools are, are right around the same cost. Um, you know, the, the uh, timing of it now is this time next year, Skyward upgrades and we didn't want to have to do the Skyward upgrade and have to replace our data warehousing at the same time. Um, and like Dr. Phillips said, Performance Plus is changing their product to align with PowerSchool. And since we use a different student information system, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to shift to Performance Matters, which is the new product, Performance Plus. Is and, and our contract with them would have ran out in October anyway. Correct. So we would have used it for a month and then we would have switched. What does the software do? Data warehousing, whether it be anything from uh, Dibbles to star math, star reading, uh, different types of assessments. The student data. Student data. And it's all housed, sorry, it's all housed in one, one area where teachers can access. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Recommend that the Board of School Directors approve the budget transfer in the amount of $12,291. Second. Any discussion? I do have a question. Now, the first two, uh, the first one says transfer from budget reserve to community relations, serve tax serve to pay a bill. Is that specific enough? Pay a bill? <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Mr. Gill. Personnel Committee, Mr. Trapeen. I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. <laughs> it's recommended the Board of School Directors approves and ratifies the following resignation, certificate of staff, and support staff. Second. Any discussion? I just wanted to say quick, um, Ann Ryder, who is resigning um, as one of the support staff, uh, she was actually an Exeter graduate, so just wanted to wish her well and uh, whatever she's doing next. Any, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Recommended the Board of School Directors approve and ratifies the following appointments certificated staff, support staff, extracurricular staff, 
Certificated substitutes, guest teachers, support substitutes. Second. Um, now, did you want to pull something from that agenda? So can, can we uh, redo that motion with uh, removing guest teachers from that, uh, those items? Correct, Madam Board of School Directors. Can we also remove uh, one and two under extra curricular staff? Separate items one and two under extra curricular staff. Recommend the Board of School Directors approve or ratifies the following appointment certificated staff, support staff, extracurricular staff minus one and two, certificated substitute, support substitutes. Sorry. Any discussion? I just also want to say again there's a number of alumni um, on the extracurricular staff and one that I recognize under certificated staff, so I just think it's cool that we have more Exeter grads coming back um, to be a part of the community. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. It's recommended the Board of School Directors approve and ratifies the following appointments, extracurricular staff items one and two, the guest teachers. I request that we separate each of those. Okay. Uh, you want to read it? Yes. Two and one. Two and two. It's recommended the Board of School Directors approve and ratifies the following appointments, Extracurricular staff number one. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Motion carries. Extracurricular staff number two. Second. Any discussion? Are there any new coaches, positions in here? Not, not new positions. Not new positions. No new positions. Other than the one, no, the fall coach. Any further discussion? Uh, I'm going to be voting no on this because of a $5 million deficit that's coming. So we don't have any coaches for the kids, they just play. Hopefully, <coughs> our decisions have to be made. <coughs> so do we get rid of the sports now or do we just get rid of coaches? Which sport don't we want to have this week? Doesn't matter. Pick so, one. Pick one, one and let's just get started because the money is. The money is leaving the accounts. We're, we're, we're taxing people beyond their ability to uh, pay, and something's got to be done now. We got to stop kicking this damn can down the road. So, according to what you're saying, you know, the football, cross country, field hockey, volleyball for girls, well, tennis for girls, soccer for boys, water polo, band, and cheerleading, they should not have any kind of management, and we're telling all the students to go to the standing in those situations. Those Specific activities teach them leadership skills as well as football team. I'm saying that we're spending entirely too much money. We have to start going back somewhere. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One opposed? No. Motion carries. I recommend the board of school directors approve the ratifies guest teachers. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? No. One opposed? Motion carries. Recommend the Board of School Directors approve or ratify the following request for change of status, administrative staff, certificated staff, support staff. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Recommend the Board of School Directors approves the attached list of course requests. Sorry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Recommend the Board of School Directors approves the attached list of staff conferences. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> It's recommended the Board of School Directors approves or ratifies extended contracts for the summer of 2019 for the following employees. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. 
Recommended the Board of School Directors approves updated job descriptions for the following positions. Supervisor of Mathematics and STEM Education, Supervisor of Literacy and ESL. Any discussion? discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chapina. And Mrs. Stratton's not here. Student functions is Anyone here to report on student functions? Would that be you, Mrs. Wilson? Or did you just point at her, Hunter? She's a, well, she's on the committee, so that's why. I'm yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I kind of threw her under the bus when I was seeing her. You okay? You want to give a shot? All right. It is, um, it is recorded that the field trip's below. Report, so there's no, there's no vote. Okay. The student lives in our district in the group home, so we provide the services and then go back. It's a procedural issue. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve this memorandum of agreement, understanding with the extra police and central Berks police departments as required by the Pennsylvania Department of Education Safe School Submission. Pending review by the <coughs> Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approves the recommendation of the committee regarding the residency status of students number 6421920 and 6431920. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Very nice job. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Athletic committee, Mr. Aarons. I don't have any regular athletic committee report. I do want to check. Do you, Bob, do you have anything to talk about with Alex Holbrook? Because that was the only thing I was going to I'm going to have to touch that. Do you want to touch on it now? Well, I, I just, um, and I'm sure Bob will touch on it again. I just think. So recently, a student on the cross-country team while they were running for a practice was hit by a car. Um, he was seriously injured. Um, it wasn't life-threatening, but he has a lot of road to recovery. Um, he's very fortunate, and he's, and he's made a lot of recovery thus far. Um, unfortunately, a good amount of his teammates got to see him uh, struck by that vehicle. And I know that it was um, traumatic for a lot of them. I know uh, that they've been really coming together as a team, and I just thought that it was worthy of note um, for the way that some of the boys reacted when that happened in order to uh, come to his side and, and act almost as a first responder to clear the scene, make it safe for him, <coughs> follow him to the hospital, uh, and I just think that we're very fortunate to have 
uh, young men who are able to react and respond in that way and that have responded since in a very positive way that's been contributing to a lot of team building. So I just wanted to make a note of that quick. I think that's, that's well noted. I, the only, and I, I totally agree, the only thing I would then clarify is what I understand it wasn't a district practice that this occurred. It was a, you, you mean, yeah. It was outside of the district. It was a running club. It was a running club and not, not a district function. Thank you. Any other? Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> Anything else uh, from your committee? Okay. Curriculum and Programs Curriculum Committee, Dr. McClendon. Second. Any discussion? I think that the number needs to be modified. The 2016, that's what's going to be. No, I'm looking at number two, for example. We talked about the 9672, but then we forget about the shipping and handling. We talked about number 315,035 and the 315 <coughs> handling. And I didn't do the math on the stuff above it, but I'm sure that number, that looks actually, so, might, it might actually have the right number in there. Right so just something we might want to modify the proposals as we go forward. We can say as correctly would be appropriate. The accurate totals were reflected at the curriculum committee meeting this evening. Um, and the, the cost breakdown for 5 6 science FOSS was 61, 5 16, 64. Um, that's correct. Uh, biology comes out to it's just over $10,000. Um, I don't have my calculator with me. I can't do that in my head. Sorry. Um, and civics is just over sixteen thousand. So, do I need to be reading all of the uh, breakdown as well? Just no, no, we're just we're talking numbers. We need to include shipping and handling charges. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, it's, well, at least, it wasn't at least for items two and three. It must be three. Two, two and three. So we're on item one right now. How many books have we talked uh, about the $3,125? What? what? Which one? Yeah, we have to do the science. 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 Yeah. science. Process. Well, but the, uh, the, the, the uh, FOSS kids, FOSS is hands-on science. So you're not just getting books. You're getting science materials as well. You're getting some specimens. You're getting, okay. you know, things like like beakers and Special you know, is right, you know, that kind of thing. So, so yes, I agree. The shipping and handling is high, but that's because you're getting materials. Honestly, and I, I've shared this with several folks. And personally, I feel like every company should waive shipping and handling if we're going to spend this kind of money on textbooks. That should be free, and you know, we try our best to get that waived. And you know, they they're greedy and they want all of their. Who's Amazon Prime? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? I, I just wanted to touch base on something um, that I, I talked with Patrick about a little bit earlier regarding the American government textbook. Um, I looked through the textbook and one of the 14 chapters is devoted to state and local government. So it's not that there is one chapter for each, there's one chapter for both of them. And state and local government is a prominent part of American government. Um, it's extremely important. I could list off a number of different things that I would say affect how local and state government affects our lives far more directly than the federal government does. Um, so I just hope that moving forward, and I understand that it's probably difficult to find 
uh, high school level textbooks that go deeply into local and state government. Um, but I, I just hope that that's going to be reflected <coughs> in our curriculum, uh, that it is extremely important that, to my knowledge, no graduate of Exeter Senior High School has gone on to serve in the federal government in uh, elected capacity, but you can see a few alumni around this table that have. So I, I think it's extremely important that we're talking about local government and state government, um, especially as it affects uh, the district so directly, far more than the federal government does. So I think it's, it's really critical that we stress that to them, um, that it's in our curriculum and features a prominent role and not just a week out of however many weeks are in a semester or in the year. So. And that's my spiel. No, that's a that's a, that's a very very valid and important point. Um, one of the uh, areas of curriculum that we're looking at next year at the high school level, we're looking at you know now that we have social studies <laughs> kind of aligned and where it needs to be in that five to eight space, kind of continuing it on into high school and looking at individual courses and making adjustments as needed. Um, the the standards that social studies courses and curriculum is aligned to is the C three framework which is a very heavy emphasis on being civic-minded. Um, and there's now a uh, requirement at the state level that um, students at some point in their high school career take a kind of a civics exam. Um, and the state's allowing districts to use questions from the US citizenship you know, test. Um, our department's gonna pull some questions from that and then some from their own. And it's going to be an assessment that will be given when students take civics at some point during that semester when they have the course. <coughs> Your point is, is absolutely noted, and as we do that curricular work next year with those high school courses, you know, we'll make sure that you know, that's an equally important part of the course and not something that is just glossed over. Well, I think it should be 50, 25, 25. I'm, I'm advocating for that. I probably won't get there, but it's more like well, maybe 95 and five. At least that was my experience, and from what I can hear from kids that are in the high school now, too. I think when you're looking at something like that, Mr. Harris, I think you have to have a curriculum that's based on what the teachers could put together. I think a publisher is not going to customize something for Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Wisconsin, or Wyoming, et cetera, because each municipality, every state will have their own unique set of walls. But I think that we somehow we can incorporate it within the curriculum that the teachers could develop that criteria, I think it would be more appropriate than asking for a publisher. I, I, I don't disagree. I, I'm, yeah, I don't disagree. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So, facilities committee, Mr. Brady. First, I just recommend that the Board of School Directors that authorizes the district administration to advertise for bids for the Exeter Township School District Project Junior High School Chiller Plant and Piping Chiller Controls. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approves the ECEF and Exeter Alumni Association to engage in a joint Eagles Nest project subject to solicitor review as outlined in the attached document. Any discussion? I'd like to invite the director for fundraising for ECEF. Maybe she'll give a brief introduction to the program for everyone because it is something we're going to be looking at going forward. It is a non cost item for the district. I thought we would take a little black Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> to go over the project. Um, ECF and the Alumni Association together have done the um, Exeter Eagle project, the brick project there, and we've done that over the last two years. So we appreciate you allowing us to do that. Um, the presentation <coughs> was included in the board packet. Um, there is a wishing well that one of our board members feels very strongly um, for us to do in memory of Oh, sorry, Tawny Kroll. Um, Tawny <coughs> was a graduate, but also a um, longtime employee of the district. So 
we originally had some bigger, grander ideas on what to do with the project, and we've kind of scaled it back a little bit. What we want to do is also include some main benches along the drive as well. So that's our, our plan um, to do this. And it will be phasing into the future just as we have with the Eagle Project. Um, but um, we, we're excited for it um, as reported later in your report, um, Allison. We have over the last year with the main bricks have raised $11,000. So split between the two organizations, um, we feel that it's a good opportunity for members to, as we said last night, to lean in, to be able to be involved and to be a part of things and to have their memory serve on or to honor someone for <coughs> graduation or for retirement. So, questions? I think one of the unique, the nice things is this, I don't know if you mentioned it, maybe I just mentioned it. The location I'm looking at is the over, we'll call it the Overlook Hill for the football team, where you'll see a number of individuals will typically pull up if they're young kids or some older people, right? will pull up to watch a football game on the grass hill. So they're not necessarily going into the stadium, but by putting the wishing well out there, maybe they'll make a donation. Also, the individual from the Alumni Association, Chris King, he's going to be working on getting signs, sponsor signs, that would be mounted up to the fence, and he's selling those, the, they'll sell those to raise additional funds, and that'll be on an annual basis. The benches, which were just mentioned, would go in that same location, so they could be used during a game, or also for those who are just going for a walk in the neighborhood or watching a baseball game on the JV field below. So I think the idea has a lot of merit. I think it would be a nice addition to the community. Any additional discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Personnel committee, Mr. Japina, no report. Policy committee, no report. Student functions committee, Mrs. Stroud. She has no report. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you'll learn. You'll learn. Technology committee. Mrs. Uh, Speaker. I do have a report. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We are on track for delivery of replacement of student devices in grades five and ten. Replacement iPads for K through three have arrived and are being prepared. E-rate infrastructure switch and wireless projects are approved by the, the FED and items are ordered. Since June 10, the 11 professional development courses were run by tech integrators, ranging from teaching digital research skills and integrating technology into the classroom to over 90 teachers. So I think the technology department is doing a great job <coughs> in uh, involving our students in education through technology. So that is my report. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. BCEF Foundation, Mrs. Wilson. Yes, uh, last month I reported um, the money that we received from mini grants, and there was a few extra things that we didn't have covered, but the May Days Committee donation um, money was able to provide the following additional items for each school, which covered everybody then on our list that requested funds. Um, at Jackson Walt, Mrs. Jenna Conroe, $375 for the STEM integration kit. Mrs. Katie Schneider, $447.37 for flexible seating and $177.63 for library books. At Lorraine, Mrs. Josie Whitney will be receiving $359.85 for coding Ozbots, and Mrs. Sherry Lynn Reedinger Smith, $407.85 for Dash Robots, and $232.20 for library books. At Awan Creek, 
Mrs. Bogus will be getting $440.60 for Action Kinetic Learning Kit for Health and PE, and there will be $559.40 for equipment upgrades needed in the TV studio. At Riften, $1,000 will be combined with the 2500 Mascaro Respect Grant, which is covering the cost of two ADA tables to be purchased and installed near the playground. At the junior high, Ms. Obst will receive $450 for breakout EDU kits. Mrs. Umarino and Mrs. Sowers will get $500 for learning ally audiobooks, and there will be $50 towards the Fall Green Fall Dream Girls STEM event. At the senior high, Mrs. Carolyn Woodford will be getting $293.15 for 32 German novels. Mrs. Pinkerton, $598 for two four by eight art display panels for the main lobby. And $108.85 will be used toward the purchase of the auditorium's new sound system. So that was the $6,000 donations <coughs> from the May Days event. Um, and was handed out to the school district. Thanks again to John Casadas and his event committee and volunteers in addition to the vendors and attendees of this annual event. The High School Eagle Statue uh, brick project install date is tentatively set for the first or second full week of August and information will be posted to the ECF and the Alumni Association's Facebook pages um, as the project begins and throughout the process. Um, hopefully that the rain now means that those first two weeks of August will be sunny. A portion of this project has been deliberately placed with blank bricks so that we can open up the project yearly for graduation gifts, memorial bricks, etc. In total, the first phase has netted $11,000 for which ECF and the Alumni Associations are splitting. Um, the annual golf tournament is set for Friday, August 2nd at Reading Country Club. The committee is working hard securing sponsors and golfers for this annual event. Thank you for to our community for graciously supporting ECF and the important work that we do. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Berks Career Tech Center Joint Operating Committee, Dr. McClendon. So I just had a couple of things in addition to the uh, Joint Operating Committee meeting kits that are in the packet. The one is about the continuing educa education program. Uh, mentioned that is a self-sustaining program and Jerry this is for you no tax dollars why do you always <laughs> point at me with this <laughs> no tax dollars to run the, the continuing education and in fact in 20 for the 2018-2019 uh, uh, school year it was they had a profit of two hundred fifty four thousand six hundred sixty six dollars for 2019-2020 the school year they're looking at um, this is for the continuing education. They have initiative to become registered apprenticeship program. Right now they only provide um, classroom instruction, so they're looking at adding that. And the other thing was about the STEAM camp that was held in June. Uh, they gave a report on that. That's the, that's the camp where the seventh and eighth graders uh, can go for a week um, to the uh, east and west campus. They had over uh, 74 campers, and they had um, choices of eight different programs. Each student participated in five programs. And they had, uh, there was a lot of positive feedback from both the students and the parents, and there was interest in expressed in returning to the camp or also enrolling in the, um, the BTPC program. So it's a really good, I hope we have uh, extra students that are Yeah, I'd like to know because it's really uh, very, very good. The program. continuing ed program? Hmm? The continuing the steam, no, no, the STEAM program at the summer camp for the summer and eighth graders. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's really a good program. And so our next meeting is August 24th. We do not meet in July. This concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. McClendon. BCIU oh. Board of Directors. Um, <coughs> every July, the BCIU Board takes a month off, so there are no, there is no BCIU board meeting in July. Legislative liaison, Mr. Gallup. No report, Dr. Hamburger. I'm sorry. I didn't have time to put anything together. No problem. You're busy. Township borough liaison, Mr. Topino. 
The only thing I have to report is um, Vinnie Bean Cone, the liaison for the township, has reached out to me and is looking to set up a meeting uh, with me, he, and the township operation director and township manager with an unspecified agenda this morning. So, keep you posted. Yeah. Do you have a date yet for that meeting? Thanks for that report, Mr. Trina. Superintendent's report, Dr. Phillips. Thank you, Dr. Hamburger. The summer consists of a lot of activities across the district, cleaning buildings, processing orders, accepting delivery of materials, and of course the ongoing professional development that has been occurring. Um, highlight from these last few weeks was our leadership week. The administration team spent uh, three days. Uh, one of the days we discussed the flexible instructional days, which is now an option. I know Mr. Trina brought it up at the last board meeting. Um, we have discussed the plan. Uh, we do have one going forward. There'll be more information to come on this because we'll be reaching out to all stakeholders to make sure they're on board with what we uh, put together. Um, as, as spoken by Alicia Leonard, we had a presentation about mental health, drugs and alcohol, and vaping, which was very informative. Um, certainly learned a lot of things uh, about vaping, uh, one in which uh, a lot of students are asking for Amazon gift cards so they can buy their vaping materials. So I had to question my nephews who used to get Dick Sporting Goods cards and now they're asking for Amazon cards. So it's interesting. Didn't know that one. Um, we also did a book study, Smart Leader, Smarter Teams, in conjunction with Leadership Week. Uh, we applied what we learned in the book study in an escape room activity and special recognition to our secondary group administrators. They were the only ones to escape. Yes. So if I can I stand up and think about representing the group? I appreciate the, uh, the nod there. There you go. Um, and then to, to go a little further on what um, Hunter was talking about, the Alex Holbrook uh, event, uh, tragic as it was, and to see the students come together, there was a fundraiser held last night at the Wymasing uh, Bakery and Restaurant. Uh, Hamid, is, everyone knows who Hamid is. He is just such a super guy, a uh, great supporter to Exeter, even though he no longer has businesses in Exeter. Uh, he hosted the event. Um, I did get a chance to, to speak with Alex. Um, he's surprisingly uh, progressing. Um, he's walking on a leg that has pins in it and a big titanium rod. Um, he's got his, you know, stitches under his chin. He's got a bunch of false teeth that he's working on. This is a 15-year-old student. Um, got a big cast on his and smiling and, and talking to people. Uh, the other thing that I thought was really nice to see is the other teams from the other school districts. I mean, I saw Mifflin t-shirts, I saw, um, trying to think of some of the other, I saw Comrade Weiser. I mean, it, so, you know, it's really become a pretty much of a, uh, a lightning rod. And it, it's really nice to see people stepping up. And it, and it was a packed the whole time I was there. And then I saw Mr. Hunter on his, or Mr. Aaron's on his way in. And that probably stayed packed after I left. So it was a really, really nice event to support him. Um, you know, I, I kind of offered the support of the district going forward. I mean, you know, he's in a, He's in a bit of a tough spot, so we'll, we'll stay behind him. That is my report. Thanks, Dr. Phillips. Is there any board member who desires to be heard at this time? Uh, so many things. <laughs> Sorry, I was kidding. Mrs. Page. Um, yes, I want to talk about uh, this was in the Reading Eagle the other day. It says that the new state budget is a boon to this, this, the public schools. And it said that um, Exeter, uh, between the basic and special ed, is going to be getting, um, it's, our budget will be $11,194,971, which is an increase of 300325 Now, Ann, do you know how much money that the special ed is getting as compared to how much the um, regular students are getting? Do you know what that breakdown at all? Oh, the specialized getting about one third of that. So about 100,000. Yeah. So they're getting 100,000 and we're going to get like 200,000. Okay. All right. Since that wasn't in the budget, how are, are we going to put that in the reserves or what are we? What no, are it was. I did include it in the budget. We had had those figures from other I used whatever, I used what the governor uh, had proposed. Oh, had proposed earlier before, mm -hmm. before. I was just wondering about that. Um, and um, they also had another report, and uh, it was it was saying that um, 
This was this report was written by the Auditor General Pasquale. He says that it is uh, unnecessary standardized testing is costing Pennsylvania taxpayers eight, $18 million. And I kind of think that's, that's kind of true because, you know, it's testing every year and every year and every year. It's just kind of like ridiculous, I think. And uh, I don't know if anybody saw this in, in the paper. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So what did you think of the kind of this? <coughs> I agree with you, but that doesn't mean the state's going to change their mind. Um, this discussion has been going on for years about the efficacy of testing. and It's a one-day thing. Mm -hmm. Should that have schools be judged? But you know, as I saw years ago uh, with the uh, you know, No Child Left Behind, mm -hmm. uh, the representative from, or it might have been a senator from Iowa said, who's going to vote against that, mm -hmm. leaving, child behind, leaving children behind? So testing is here, uh, and I don't think it's going to go on. Well, maybe we can talk to uh, someone in the federal government and see. We, we had a nice see. discussion with uh, our Wilhelm? state, uh, Chrissy Wilhelm. Oh, she's got all our gripes, if you will, and she's going to fight for us. Oh, good. Well, I think it is good too to note that uh, in 2014, when they popped, when they passed every Student Succeeds Act, which repealed No Child Left Behind, they made a good amount of incremental steps that I think were past one or two increments give districts and states more authority to uh, uh, be more flexible with the local district. So I think that they know that we're headed in that direction. That, that's what I hear on C-SPAN every time I watch, I promise. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Talking to my friend Pat across the room on her tests. Did you see the article this week that came out from PSBA regarding using SATs in place of keystones? I, when, that was not PSA. It was, uh, PSB driven. That was someone. Like someone was behind that. Yes, someone was behind it using it as an alternative testing. That was. I thought that was the essence of the article. That, that, that came from. That came from the came attorney general. Uh, yeah, recommendations. Yeah, 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 I'm not sure. That's that's what he said. I'd rather use the ACT. Yeah. 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 Yeah.